Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. I am EVM and behind that camera is our new home battery system. A few years ago, I did this video about the eight kilo hour battery from Give Energy that I had installed and said it was the best on the market at the time, all things considered, value being one of the chief metrics. And I stand by that. It's still a fantastic system and I had very little issues with it. But I used advanced man maths and to be honest, a bit so I could get content on the channel as well. There's, there is that unique opportunity. Um, and I passed that system on to somebody else. That meant that I could look at the market as a new customer from afresh. I could say, which is a, a lot more congested, now there's a lot more options, which is the best today, which is the best in 2023 and get that. Now things are different now than they were just a few years ago, because as I said, there's a lot more options, but for me, it's turned into a battle of the ecosystems which is the best system out there rather than which is the best battery. Now the battery is the core of all this. It's, it is the central linchpin, but it's the ecosystem people want. The app that controls everything, your charger, solar divert options maybe, the battery of course, your solar panels. You want to be able to see everything in one place. Now that gives me three realistic options on the market. The Tesla Powerwall system, the My Energy Libby system, and the new Give Energy systems. So out of all those three, what have I replaced my Give Energy system with? What today do I think for us is the best system on the market, all things considered? Now, if anybody's unfamiliar with a battery system and why it makes sense, there are two realistic reasons to get them. One, if you have solar panels, then of course you can store all that solar energy, charge the batteries up, so that solar energy can carry on power in the house through the night, depends how full it is, until the sun comes out the next day, and then it recharges it up again. So during months like this, certainly over the last few weeks for us, we're almost entirely ran, in terms of electric usage anyway, from sun. But the second reason, which is all year round, it's not just a summer thing, is the time of day tariff. With that, you've got a cheap period at night. For us, it's six hours at seven and a half pence per kilowatt hour. And the rest of the day, the other 18 hours is a lot more expensive. But if your battery is big enough, you can charge that battery up at night. And then for the other 18 hours, that can continue to power the house from the battery. So the majority of your energy will come from the cheap nighttime period. And that's assuming no solar input whatsoever, or even you just don't have solar panels at all. I'm not saying the financials make sense. That's for a future video. Does it make sense financially to buy a battery and how much will it save you? That is again for the future. This is about the system itself, the hardware, what we have today. With the eight kilowatt hour battery system we had previously, before we got the heat pump, then yes, that was enough for us. That powered the house for the rest of the day by charging it up cheaply at night during the winter when there's no sun. Now, however, we do have the heat pump outside and that, of course, has meant that we're using no gas, but we are using a lot more electricity. So the system I've gone for has been sized appropriately, shall we say. Let me now show you what we've gone for. Let me spin the camera around and give you a flimsy reveal of the new battery system. So which have I gone for? The Tesla, the My Energy, or another GIVE system? And here it is. It's the new GIVE Energy home battery system. I've got rid of my old battery system for basically the same sort of system again, but this is entirely new, new battery, new inverter. Um, now, let me show you around this system and the app and other options. And then after that, I'll tell you why I didn't go for the Tesla Powerwall system and why I didn't go for the My Energy system. So this, for those that are unfamiliar with batteries as a whole, this is the actual battery. This is the second battery, so I've got two of them. And this here is the inverter. I've gone for the Gen 3 hybrid inverter. Hybrid basically means that this is the inverter for my solar panels and my home battery system. So for me, that means one box on the wall instead of two, and it runs more efficiently for us because DC panels on the roof, DC battery, very little losses to charge the battery up, and I don't have to go from DC to an AC coupled system back to a DC battery and so forth. So that's why I went for that. That's what I had before. It's just a higher rated one. This is now a five kilowatt Gen 3 inverter. And if you want the actual, you know, the full specs, I will put that in a link in the description below. So 
Um, I'm not too much jargon in this particular video. If you want the actual full on stuff, that's in the description. This, again, battery to battery. This is the 9.5 kilo hour give battery and that's another 9.5 course, giving me a total of 19 kilowatt hours worth of capacity. And as you can maybe see there, they're completely full, even though it's about 11 a.m. in the morning. And that is entirely from sun. It's only getting to about 60, 70% overnight before the, the sun tops it up again. So it's doing its job. But again, it's mainly the winter side of things that I'm bothered about because the heat pump, well, this is the immersion heater and everything else, the heat pump's outside, but the heat pump obviously uses a lot more during winter. So these are sized, the 19 kilowatt hours should do us enough so for 50, maybe 52 weeks of the year, depending on how mild it is, the winter, it should power us through the other 18 hours. So the six hours they charge up, I do other things for the house, the high load appliances, I do the hot water for the heat pump, and then they should hopefully power the house and the heat pump through the rest of the day. So the vast majority, I would say 95% of the electricity in needs of the house, excluding the car of course, will come from that cheap nighttime period. Let me now show you the thing that you'll be interacting with the most, the app. Let me just start my phone recording. At the top, you'll see it says home and away. The home bit basically means I am at home, of course, but it will connect directly to the battery and refresh every 10 seconds rather than being away. And it's, I think it's every 10 minutes or five minutes, five or 10 minutes. You can see the solar panels, 832 watts going into the house. The battery is filling in the rest because for some reason the house is using 1.49 kilowatts. Someone's clearly using something. Um, and I know it says four watts coming from the grid. That's just a little bit of inertia. Ignore that, it's a tiny amount, it's normal. Every system will do it. It's just for me, anything under, I know 10 watts might as well just be zero because it's near as die. You're just getting a snapshot of that millisecond every time it refreshes. So, so don't panic that, why is it using the grid or anything like that? At the bottom, you can see I'm on 86%. If I click on that, then you can see, well, over the last 24 hours. So that's the 15th. If I move to today, yeah man, there we go, that's the 16th. So you can see my battery, the green line at the top, that's going down and then back up again, depending on the usage. The sun, which is obviously very high at the moment, it's very strong, I'm getting a lot of that. So I'm not using any grid input whatsoever. You've got full control. I can click on that at the bottom to give me various graphs of power usage and all the data you want. That graph as well, I'm not gonna go through it in too much detail. Now, if I click on the bit at the top, you can see there we've got smart plugs. This is something no one else does. And again, it's part of that integration that I like. I've got uh, seven or eight of them, I think. So you can see my CCTV system in, in you know, upstairs is currently using 38 watts, which if I click on it, will then tell me how much it's used over the last day, seven days, 31 days. So you can, you can micromanage, which will really annoy your family, how much you're using. And this is, again, something I find really valuable. My aquarium, because it's warm at the moment, is using far less than it would during winter. That is a proper power hog. That's something which I do think is a worthwhile bonus. It's just using smart plugs, which aren't new or unique, but it's all in one place. The smart tariff just essentially means it integrates with your energy tariff. In my case, I'm on uh, Octopus Intelligent now, um, and it just gives you the details from that, so it links in with Octopus. And if you see here where it says EV charger, I'm going to, without anybody noticing, paste in the demo because obviously I don't have the charger at the moment. Ooh, that was seamless, wasn't it? Now we're using um, my charger. Now, if I had an EV charger, this is what it would look like. And you can see you've got various options. You can schedule stuff. And look, the vehicle will charge from the sun. So it does essentially what the Zappi does and various others now. That's, that's no longer a unique feature. Quite a few ones do solar divert. You can use it away from home in the same way. It just doesn't refresh as quickly. So yeah, that for me is the whole reason why, yes, batteries from other manufacturers that just do batteries will always be sold, but I think people choose the software, don't they? Let me just stop this recording. So for example, if you get in your phone, I don't think many people will say, I want a, I don't know, Samsung, or uh, an Apple iPhone because of the camera, because of the hardware. I think it's just a case of, I want something that runs iOS or I run, want something that runs Android because that's what I'm familiar with. That's what uh, the Play Store or the App Store has. It's the ecosystem, the software around it, which is key. I even painted the wall black and you know, did all this because 
only I will ever see it. You know why I do it. Any home energy geek out there would have done the same thing. Don't, don't tell me you wouldn't have done. This essentially should be it now. Our home system, our eco jiggery pokery, whatever you want to call it, should essentially be complete. The heat pump's in place. The solar panels, the, the roof's full, the battery system, everything is as it should be. I think we're pretty much, in terms of big, expensive hardware, we're pretty much done. Now though, let me tell you why I didn't go for the other two ecosystems. And as I said earlier, this is very much a battle of who's got the best system rather than just who's got the best hardware. Now, in terms of that hardware, I'm more than happy with the gift stuff. They've got one of the best, if not the best, warranties around, and they manufacture everything. The Give Energy group of companies manufacture everything you see here. The inverter, the chassis, the battery cells, all of it, the firmware, the software, the app, all of it is done by Give Energy, and they're a British-owned company. In fact, the guy that owns it is from Yorkshire, so I might as well just end it there, and that should be enough. But I'll carry on anyway. Um, that, for me, is a big advantage, because if you can manufacture something from scratch all the way to the end, software, firmware, hardware, all of it, then you can tweak stuff bit by bit at any point in the production line. No one else does that on the home battery market, as far as I know, in the world. Even Tesla don't manufacture their cells, Panasonic do. So it gives them an edge over a lot of other competitors. And of course, having that British support base is a big bonus as well. So why did we not go for the Tesla Powerwall? Well, effectively, the ecosystem wasn't something that seemed to be growing or getting better. You have the charger. I mean, I have a Tesla Model 3, so it kind of made sense for that, you know, all in one app. But there are no solar diverter options at all with the charger, with anything else. The ecosystem, the app, as I said, is really good. I like that bit of thing, but it was also a lot more expensive for the battery. And there was a huge lead time when I ordered all this. I think it was like 15 months or something ridiculous. It, it was kind of a limited ecosystem and well, price being the, the main reason, it just wasn't for us. So why didn't we go for the MyEnergy option, the Libby? Well, for me, it's twofold. One, the specs, the hardware of it. I'll come to that in a second and two, the price. So everything you see here, as I said, is manufactured by the Give Energy group of companies. Firmware, inverter, battery cells, the lot. So this I see as a base. This is what somebody can make from the ground up and how much it costs them. Development costs, everything, research, all of it is, is integrated here. This is the price of the MyEnergy Libby system that's an equivalent to this. They call it the 20 kilowatt hour version, although they've been a bit naughty on this one because that's the total capacity not the usable capacity. The usable is about, I believe, 18.5 kilowatt hours. So it's, it's close enough to be the comparable MyEnergy product. So this is, for me, a direct comparison price. It's for the hardware only, trade price from a wholesaler. And it's nearly 5,000 pounds more expensive. And I just do not see the justification for it. There's no software development there beyond integrating into that ecosystem. The firmware of the K-Star product it's based on is from K-Star, it's not from my energy. Otherwise, they wouldn't need this, the external controller. That tells the battery what to do. So it's someone else's battery that integrates into their system rather than their battery as a whole. And to put it into context, you could get this system and probably, or almost, a solar array on your roof for the same price as just the Libby. And another issue I have is that the K-Star it's based on is thousands of pounds cheaper than the MyEnergy Libby. This is the MyEnergy Libby. It looks quite nice. Uh, this is the K-Star it's based on. Then you've got Clone 1, Clone 2, Clone 3, Clone 4, Clone 5, Clone 6, and of course, Clone 7. So... This is clearly something which many, many companies that, quite frankly, I've never heard of are using, but they're not charging anywhere near the price of the Libby. So I just struggled to find the justification. I, I, I could not do that. The My Energy system doesn't do anything unique over this. Give Energy are making, and it's out within the next month or two, I think, the AV charger that does solar divert. I believe they're doing an immersion divert as well, although that is utterly pointless if you've got a heat pump and a home battery system because I want my heat pump to do my hot water at three, 400% efficiency rather than an immersion heater. This system and the MyEnergy system are very much equals, but the hardware for Give Energy is much better. 
factor in the massive reduction in price and you arrive at what I've decided to do. I do like my energy. I know it seems like I bashed it a bit here, but I want them to succeed. Like Give Energy, British company. I just feel like this is their first product mistake. Either way, when it comes to value as a metric, certainly being one of the chief metrics, there was only one option, this. Well, it's the best value. It's a full ecosystem. They're manufacturing a lot of stuff in the UK now, if that's important to you, the building a warehouse as we speak. And well, it's a good system. The only thing I would say about Give Energy is if they say something's coming out next month, it'll be about five months before it actually does come out. Right guys, uh, I'm pretty much done. Um, please subscribe so you can see what other systems we integrate into my Give Energy system in the future. So we can follow that and the journey because there will be other things coming to this and integrating it, even if it's outside of the Give Energy ecosystem. I do want everything to work together and then it will work more efficiently. It will save me more money and it will work well with the heat pump. And I think there is something going on there in terms of integration with other systems. And that's, again, another key point. I can control this locally. You can't do that with a lot of other battery systems. So if the uh, servers go down at Give Energy, <clears throat> then I can still control this with things like uh, Home Assistant and other uh, options like that. And I believe in the near future, they're also changing their app so it doesn't require a cloud logon. So if for whatever reason your internet's down or their servers are down, you can still control this yourself. You don't have to rely on their systems being up all the time, which is another consideration, I think. Other systems out there do rely on that server system, the cloud systems running for you to be able to affect change. So that local control is something that I did really want as well. Uh, right, I'm done. There we go. Thanks for watching. Please put in the comments what you have. Have you got a home battery system? Are you thinking about it? Have you looked at this, the all-in-one, the My Energy, the any number of the other stuff out there? Have you got any of the my energy clones because there's a lot out there i'd be interested to know what they're like so yeah thank you for watching guys and i'll see you soon